Hello, hello. Welcome back to Let's Talk HP Lovecraft. As always, just going to ask you to please subscribe and uh, be sure to check back daily. Uh, doing Let's Talk HP Lovecraft today. It's been over a week since the last one of these. I fully intend to review every single piece of fiction by HP Lovecraft. Um, well on my way, but uh, kind of going through that um, middle of the project rut where um, feeling a little bit tired, a little bit worn down, but I uh, still have a long way to go before I feel the pull of the finish line. But today's story is Sweet Ermengarde or The Heart of a Country Girl. It was written under the pseudonym Percy Simple and having just read it I understand why he used a pseudonym because this story has absolutely no uh, supernatural um, weird story elements. It is very much in a different uh, genre altogether. Um, and it's, it's probably wise at that time. I think he probably would have had trouble <laughs> um, with people making that association between, you know, what is this? <laughs> if you just compare it to everything else that he wrote. Of course, now everybody's interested in knowing everything that he did write, um, which is why it's included in this collection. Uh, probably written between 1919 and 1921, they're not really sure, but it was not first published until Beyond the Wall of Sleep, uh, an Arkham House publication collection uh, released in 1943. It is a comic short story divided into seven very short chapters. Uh, this story actually could probably work as a novel or as a movie, which I'll talk about at the end of the video. Uh, the seven chapters are called A Simple Rustic Maid, and the villain still pursued her, a dastardly act, subtle villainy, the city chap, alone in the great city, and happily ever afterward. Uh, in a nutshell, Ermengarde is a 30-year-old daughter of a farmer. Uh, the farmer runs a still on a farm, but she's actually um, pretending to be 16 years old, and she dyes her hair blonde. She's actually a brunette, so she's not everything uh, she pretends to be. Uh, you know, seems a little bit simple, seems a little bit dumb, but as you find out, she's probably a little bit more clever than that. Uh, several men want to marry Ermengarde, uh, mostly because they've discovered that there is gold on her father's property, and they would like to inherit it. Uh, one of these men uh, tries the old-fashioned way. Uh, he just romances her. Um, another one, who um, is a rich uh, nobleman, I guess you would say, a businessman, he owns the mortgage on her father's um, property and is threatening to take the farm. And then she's also briefly kidnapped by this man who then actually releases her when he realizes uh, that doesn't make any sense. I had the mortgage. <laughs> Why didn't I need to do that? Uh, she also... Um, elopes with a man, um, but when he turns out to be a scumbag who is cheating on her, uh, he, she kicks him off the train um, when they were on their way to the city, but she ends up uh, alone and poor in this city uh, where she finds an old lady's purse, uh, returns it, the lady is taken by her because uh, she looks like the daughter who she lost long ago. Um, the result is that Ermengarde uh, inherits this old lady's fortune because she actually is the daughter, um, the long last daughter, who was kidnapped um, by the Farbers, her people she thought were her parents. Um, in the end, uh, she blackmails the man who has the mortgage, the man who kidnapped her, basically forces him to marry her. Um, that way, uh, they can both get the farm and the gold, as well as the wealth of the old lady um, who has adopted her and is now her, uh, um, she's now her heir. Uh, it's, it's one of those stories, sort of reminds me of like a Victorian era, like romance, almost like sort of the tangled web of like, um, who's the lady who wrote Pride and Prejudice? Come back to me in a second. Sort of has that whole vibe to it. Um, though it is, of course, more comical, more silly, and it has that slight, um, sort of like fabulistic edge to it, that slight, um, I wanted, how do I want to describe it? Uh, it's like, I guess, a parody, um, I don't know what you'd call it, um, other than a comedy. <laughs> I think it would great make a great movie, though, um, 
uh, you know, do it in period costume, sort of give it that um, 20s look, or even an older look than that. I think you could do it like in a Victorian era, um, and it would work cool. Um, Ermengarde would be a great uh, example of like girl power, which is totally in style right now. I think for a movie version, I would sort of minimize some of Ermengarde's faults, make her less, um, I don't know, less, I guess she's actually, she, she wins out, but she's, and she's been victimized, but she's also not innocent herself, so I think I would probably pull back on some of that because somebody needs to be the hero in the story because pretty much everybody is a scumbag, which sort of works in the form of a short story, but maybe would not so much in the term, uh, in the setting of a, like a full-length movie. But it's a great little story. Um, it's not the kind of thing that I expected at all from H.P. Lovecraft. Um, you know, he's only wrote a couple of comedic stories in his entire, um, a short career, uh, but this is a good one. It's it feels very out of place. I did not know what I was getting into when I first began that story. It's uh, six seven pages long. Take you 15 minutes to read, maybe um, 15 16 minutes if you listen to an audiobook version, which I just did. Um, it's interesting. I like it. Uh, um, it, it 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 seems weird from H.P. Lovecraft, but I do love that about them, um, about that, about him. <clears throat> I'm discovering more and more recently that he did more <clears throat> than just the weird story, and actually some of his best writing takes place in these outlier stories that are set within like the Cthulhu mythos. Uh, he actually seems to exercise some of his mo his best restraint and his best prose writing um, when he's working a little bit outside of his comfort zone. I think that's the sort of thing that happens with people when, he, when you step outside your comfort zone, you don't want to um, fall short, so you take extra attention to um, doing it well and doing it right, and that certainly seems to be the case with Sweet Ermengarde or The Heart of a Country Girl by Percy Simple. If you've not read this, uh, be sure to. Uh, it's good. It's worth your time. And uh, come back very, very soon to Let's Talk H.P. Lovecraft for another great short fiction review. See ya.